differently abled differently Earning, learning and growing an inclusive and diverse workforce was the theme for the day as the Kenya Business and Disability Network held a breakfast meeting. Take a look at that story. There was a time I was looking for a job and I see persons with disabilities are encouraged. I indicate I have a disability there, but I'm not called for an interview. So I decided I'm going to remove it. I removed it. I received so many. Inter, you know, interview invitation. My loss of sight did something interesting. It, it came as a challenge to prove my worth. So the hard work, changing subjects, or rather changing um, uh, the degree course in the university and changing to law with a resolve to excel. What is the meaning of work? And why do we work? And there are many, many reasons why we work. First of all, for human beings, it gives us fulfillment. And that is why, that is why we, every day we wake up and we look for something to do. We're always actively looking for work. It gives us meaning and it's fulfilling. And most important, when you're working, you get an income. The number of people who are unemployed in Kenya keeps rising every year. Persons with disabilities are included in these numbers. When you look at Kenya today, and Africa generally, unemployment is very high. We look everywhere we look, we are seeing unemployment. When we look at our own company, when we, through our website, when we ask for jobs, we can see the number of people who post to ask, apply for jobs. It tells you there's something that is, that is missing. And when I think about persons with disabilities, the challenge is even bigger than that. Because if you are, the people who are able are having challenges, the people with disabilities have triple challenges. First of all, because of the way society treats them. From the moment they start going to school, it's, there's no inclusivity for them to be able to get the best out of them in the school system. Then generally the way the society teaches them. And then the way that we are culturized, the way we are socialized. We don't think that persons with disabilities can do a job. Employers have seen this gap and are coming together to deliberately champion for inclusion in workspaces. This journey to inclusion reminds me of the words of Francis Bacon, who said that, and I quote, we lies to great heights by a widening staircase of small steps. The vision is very clear. Let us all continue to make our individual steps, however small, and together we shall achieve more. We have a huge opportunity ahead of us and in front of us to then say what's a mandate that we put on the table that we follow religiously around people with disabilities. Advertisements and interviews, which are the first steps in the employment process, should be able to reach every person with a disability in a form that they clearly understand. When it comes to interviews, they shrink, you know, um, and that's why when I say we are leadership hub, it's about working on ourselves first because the difficulties we experience, there are too many that you calling me for an interview, I find so many people in that panel, I, I lose confidence. I, I even forget who I am at that moment. Justice Imana Laibuta called on employers not to miss on the significant input from persons with disabilities due to inaccessible workplaces. Those of you here, don't look at the disability. Look at the performance of those you bring on board. If they don't perform, warudi kwa mama nyumbani. If they perform, reward them. But let us give opportunities because I know disability or no disability, there are very, very high performers out there with special needs. Not just inclusion, again, you have to think about reasonable accommodation. It comes at an expense. But remember, again, we have legislation that allows you to recoup the money you spend on reasonable accommodation by tax rebates.
to the same value. So you, are, you really have nothing to lose. Dr. Sarah Mwikali calls for employers to give roles that they have qualified for and not only those that touch on disability. When I get these jobs, it is not disability related, but the fact that you have a disability, sometimes they want to give you a disability role. <laughs> and because um, I talked about flexibility of thought, I would still hold my position, the one I applied, and then this one for disability, how I would support. As much as persons with disabilities may academically qualify for jobs, the skills may match with what employers are looking for. We talk about emerging skills. We, we are challenging the academia and individuals uh, in, in, in education to start thinking differently for the skill set that employers are looking out for. Our own staff, we keep talking to them about reskill. Mm -hmm. uh, read something new, think about the digital and the data skills that are emerging, think about cybersecurity. Those are the worlds that you are stepping into. But what's happening as we feed the pipe of talent from our institutions, there is still a lag. And, and so I think there is no uh, single silver bullet that says this is the only thing that we can do as organizations or as academia. I think it's a concerted effort and the reason that we are here, all of us. However, employers are urged to work closely with persons with disabilities as they are instrumental in job placements since they understand the need. The simple thing is, can you reach out? We help you in that journey because we understand perhaps your advert might not be inclusive to someone who is, say, blind. You are, maybe the way you communicate, somebody who is deaf might not be able to capture what you are saying. Then it means they won't apply because talent acquisition managers are always saying, when I put up an advert, I can't see people applying. It's because they never saw your advert. It just didn't occur to you that we don't read newspapers. There's no a newspaper which, has, uh, which is brailed. There isn't in Kenya. We're differently abled, differently.